Welcome to Upon This Rock. Today we're continuing the series of Through the New Testament in 2022. We're in Mark chapter 11, verse 1. And when they had come nigh to Jerusalem and to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples. And he saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. He specifically chose a colt uh, because in that day to come riding on a colt uh, was to come as a man of of peace. Uh, Jesus didn't come to Jerusalem as a conquering general, but instead as a servant. Zechariah 9.9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the fat foal of an ass. Verse 2 also says a colt that no man has sat upon. This colt was still unbroken, but of course Jesus had no issue once again displaying his authority over nature. Verse 3, And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways meet, and they loose him. And a certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off trees and strawed them in the way. They used their cloaks, their clothes as a saddle for Jesus and as a carpet for the colt that he rode on. Verse 9, And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This word Hosanna is often viewed as an acclamation, uh, and ultimately this, this would be an accurate view of what was going on. But in its truest form, it is more than just that. Hosanna is actually from a Hebrew expression um, that originally was a cry for help. Uh, It is a word that encompasses both an expression of praise as well as a call of desperation unto God. Verse 10, Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, and he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Like the Jewish leaders in Israel as a whole in the days of Jesus, it had an outward form but no fruit. In this picture, Jesus warns showing his displeasure when we have the appearance of fruit but not the fruit itself. God isn't pleased when his people are all leaves and no fruit. Verse 15, And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye made it a den of thieves. These sellers were working in the outer courts of the temple, uh, and this was the only area that the Gentiles could come and pray uh, and would obviously create a distracting and difficult environment for Gentiles to seek God. Uh, As if this wasn't a problem enough, the the prices were also quite unfair. According to Barclay, the price for a pair of doves in the temple was about 20 times more expensive than the price outside of the temple. Verse 18, And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curedest, cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered, saying unto them, 
have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. And of course here he's talking about faith. An unforgiving heart can hinder prayer just as much as a lack of faith. Verse 26, But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned within themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Jesus essentially flipped the script. They demanded his credentials, and he simply pointed out their lack of ability to discern. Jesus didn't bother to answer them because it was evident they were not worried um, about answering honestly, but rather in a way that was safe politically. They placed greater importance upon popularity rather than knowing the true will and word of God. Thank you for joining me upon this rock. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and God bless.